Simon, post-match last night at Anfield, interested in your take on Virgil van Dijk's comments. Um, basically, he was saying, amongst other things, he was unhappy with former players, criticising them during what's been a tough a tough time. Uh, he says, coming back from the horror show in Naples, it was very important to show a positive reaction. We're not listening to the outside world. A lot of ex-football players who know exactly what we go through, they say a lot to get us down. But we know the last game was very bad and this was a step in the right direction. Do a lot of ex-pros say a lot to get people at Liverpool down at a time like this? Well, I mean, my view will be relatively formulaic, which is that the industry itself can only seem to have one direction of travel, which is praise, praise, more mm. praise, and a little bit more praise on top. And <laughs> you have to build character in people. You have to make them accountable for their performances. They're in a wonderful position. You know, no one really cares what they have to go through. To, to win a football match because that's the job that they do nobody really cares what it takes a train driver to drive a train nobody really cares what he has to go through to do that so I'm not entirely sure why anybody within the industry but it's this, it's this scenario where because you've played you must not criticise because you know what it takes to be involved in that industry and that is a real load of old rot it's self-perpetuating nonsense if you want to, if, if, you're, if you're serving at agendas if the motivation is somebody doesn't like somebody and they're doing it for that reason then that's absolutely right mm. if you're an Aston Villa player digging out a Birmingham player because you have this rivalry of Birmingham yeah. that's disingenuous but if you're a top flight footballer that played in the Premier League and you have an honest held opinion that you can stand up and defend if it's challenged why should the one people that can give everybody else Let's be clear. The reasons why football exists in the way that it does at this moment in time is because of broadcasters. And the reasons why the broadcasters do it is because of the paying public that want to see it. So the paying public have a right to have a degree of insight. And who are they going to get that from? From ex-players that can speak far more eloquently and far more... And we spend a, a, in, our, in our time, Jim, being told, well, you didn't play, so you don't know. <laughs> so then, then the players answer That's a question, right. give an honest appraisy, and now uh, that avenue shut down. So I do think it's rather preposterous that people like Virgil van Dijk would not be would not be asking a former player if Danny Murphy was on here saying Virgil van Dijk is the best thing since sliced bread he wouldn't be saying to Danny Murphy you know what I go through keep those opinions to yourself <laughs> would he? <laughs> exactly I, do you know what I, I mean I, it comes down to, you know not that long ago Klopp had an outburst at Gabby at Bon Lahore here mm. and now we've got Virgil van Dijk's comments I mean why is it suddenly Simon's right why is it suddenly deemed offensive for ex-players like yourself to critique current players? Well I, I think Virgil I think it's a strange one coming from him because basically the majority of his time at Liverpool is everyone has spent minutes if not hours eulogising about what a wonderful player he is and rightly so because he's a Rolls Royce of a defender who, every, who everybody knows his quality the standards he set himself he's fallen below so inevitably there's going to be comments on that and honest honest truthful punditry it's nothing more than that mm. you know the guy's a nice fellow he's been a revelation at Liverpool but when he plays poorly and he's not at it compared to his own high standards we will call it anyone should Why? But Simon's right they love it when they're praised well, the, the other and thing, then they get all sensitive when they're not the other thing I'd say from a player's point of view and a manager and this is the way I dealt with it and, and the way I think is the best way and the best players I played with did the same when somebody's having a dig or when somebody you think's being critical unless it gets personal of course but when they're being critical from a footballing perspective the last thing you do is qualify it by talking about it you might listen in your four walls of your own home and you might think, you know, I remember I remember years ago one of my first times on Match Today about doing someone did a piece, it was Alan Hansen who I loved, you know, and, and some, some of it was good, some not so good, but it, because it was him, I didn't then go in the press and go say anything about Alan Hansen, I just, I just took it on. And it's, I wouldn't do that. You know, as soon as, as soon as Jürgen mentioned Gabby, I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like he's giving it credibility. I don't, I wouldn't do it as a player. Yeah, but Gabby's and comments were valid. I know they were. So, but, but and, and, and the comments towards the way Van Dijk has been playing or not playing as well as wh whether be, they are, are, are they, valid. But whether they are or they aren't, don't bring them up because that shows that it's you. You're bothered. Yeah. The mentality of an elite footballer is: I'll get on my job and I'll keep doing it the best I can. And what what's said on the outside doesn't bother me. That's what you've got to show. You know that resilience. Not start talking in an interview about you know pundits saying this. But I was surprised Virgil said that. Mm. I really was. I mean, the next question, the journalist's next question should be, I think, if I was the journalist, I'd be saying, but was it fair comment? Yeah. Was it fair observations? You're pushing back against it because you don't That's like right. it. That's but right. were they fair observations? And there seems to be an element, and it's not just in current football, but it's been around for a very long time, that there's this little world where footballers exist and everyone else exists. 
and you have to pay lip service and anybody and it, like Shearer Shearer wouldn't say a bleeding thing about anybody until he decided he didn't want to be a manager anymore now he doesn't want to be a manager anymore now he's a pundit now he's talking openly and people are getting to see what a real top class footballer sees in supposedly top class footballers and that's the kind of insight that should be available exactly Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.